Hello America, it's time for my pretty face again. This is November 11th, 09. Are we going to have yet another economic stimulus package? Perhaps. Good chance. More guineas. You know, as they create conditions that uh, make it impossible for you to do your job because your company cannot afford to keep you on, thusly you become certainly dependent on a government health insurance plan because you will lose your own at, at your job, which you will lose. That's how they corral you in, how they rope you in, and how they make you need them so that everybody's screaming and crying for them to do something because doing something is better than doing nothing. Well, how much uh, do you want to bet that these butt munches that pal around with the magnificent pharaoh the 44th, or like Pelosi, et al., the whole sorry bunch of them. They need another stimulus. They need to print even more money and fling it out there into the uh, economic ether. And they're going to uh, state as their reason for needing such a stimulus package is because the last one, which was actually the second one, did not work because in that stimulus, if you remember, no money was actually printed. It was just allowed to be kept by employees, or like union, labor union communists and their sympathizers, the king of the world, Barack Hussein Obama, like to call you workers, the working class. You are the proletariat. You were allowed to keep in your paychecks uh, anywhere from 8 to $13 per week. They, they've been withholding 8 to $13 per week less out of your paychecks. And that is uh, supposed to be economic stimulus. So you can go buy a 12-pack of beer per week extra. But um, because many of you are losing your jobs now due to this recession that he inherited. Let's argue that for a minute. The Obama did not inherit anything. He prepared his people, the people that surround him, the people that funded him, the people that have pushed him to the top, the people that uh, pull his strings, the people that are actually in charge. Soros, Axelrod, they pulled the strings that caused the avalanche which is this economic downturn and devaluation of the dollar and uh, general angst amongst the citizenry of the United States of America. Yay and lo, the entire world stemming from there. These people created the condition during which time Obama has been placed in authority. Do you see? Because more than expected have lost their jobs Actually, it's going according to plan. The master of the universe said so himself. So it is his plan that you lose your jobs. Yea, that more of us will lose our jobs. And thusly, more of us and potentially all of us will bow the knee and face Mecca, I mean Washington, and plead for help and sympathy. And hopefully our wise, sagacious leaders will hear our cry, the desperate cry of their people in famine land. Uh, they will say that workers were forced into unemployment roles which became more of a financial burden to the state and federal check writing to the masses budgets. We're going to get Pelosi or something, Barney Frank up there. The money was never really put out there. The extra eight to thirteen dollars per week per taxpayer was never realized, so it never had an effect. Most people, that's you guys, everywhere I go, I try to uh, talk to people and they don't even know and don't really care what's going on. They blame Bush, of course, and so the media and the president and all of his sycophants have done a good job programming everybody. And because it's also the easiest, most gutless, where nobody has to blame them own selves. Uh, for the situation predicament we find ourselves in. Because they 
you know, they would rather watch sports or something because you cannot follow these intricate and dastardly underhanded schemes that this administration is putting over on you. And the media either doesn't realize it or they are helping to cover up the shell game or they think they get it uh, but don't want to expose it or they're just scared that if they do tell the truth, they'll look like a bunch of paranoid kooks. They don't want to say anything against, you know, influential political figures because then they might not come on their show. Whoever says, look, man, uh, the emperor's got no clothes, that person gets mocked. Right now our situation is like all of us are in an airplane, and the pilot of the airplane, that would be like all these people who are in charge of our lives and uh, trying to take more charge of our lives uh, are in the cockpit and they're on the intercom and we are all passengers and they're telling us yes we're having a smooth flight we should land in heaven on earth uh, utopia uh, by the end of my first term so before my re-election or definitely after my re-election as into my second term as president of the United States Oh yes, also, also 10 years out, all these budgets come together and everything, and we don't realize deficits anymore. 10 years out, right? This is like a carrot way in the distance, like a, some galaxy up in space that you can always see with the Hubble. So the ones uh, who are trying to see things for what they are and, you know, practically analyze the situation and who uh, interpret these actions as to not being beneficial to improve the situation. Indeed, uh, it appears as if these actions are intended to make things worse. We're regarded as cynical. We're regarded as hateful. And, oh, we're racists also. Because that's the easiest thing for all these simpletons out here to understand. Because they don't, you guys don't understand the ins and outs of what these are the shifty up to no good people who want to bring down this country are actually up to. You don't see it. You don't want to see it. You guys are like passengers on this plane I'm talking about that are sleeping. We're sleeping. We all got the little plastic covers that go up and down in the windows of the plane. You know, we all got them covers down. You know, what I'm trying to tell you is like somebody who's awake on the plane, uh, who's being told by the cockpit, by the pilot, uh, over, uh, you know, Kansas, on a flight between New York and L.A. All's well. And flight's going according to plan, and everything's going smooth. And, and I look out the window, and uh, I notice that, uh, hell, there's nothing but water underneath us. And we are, like, over the ocean. Uh, when we were just told that we're flying over Kansas, that would be a landmass, wouldn't it? I mean, flyover country's all big, huge landmass. I mean, there's no ocean anywhere. I asked the uh, other passenger, hey, nudge him on the in the elbow. Hey, man, we're over the water. What, what's up with this? And then he's like, uh, um, no way, on. That's, that's you people. Nobody's watching this anyway. I'll say it one more time. You guys better wake up.